Good weekend all. Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your Metals Market Weekend Edition and this is for Friday the 29th of November 2019. So what we've got now is one of these time frames that we come out of Thanksgiving and we get into three weeks of solid trading until we get towards December. I will not be in the office on Monday. I had a death in the family and I'm just not going to be here. So I will be back recording for you on Tuesday. So for those of you that are my subscribers, nothing I can do about it. Everybody else, same thing, but you'll catch me back on Tuesday. A down day in the stock market today, and yes, the markets were open. We have these crazy holiday times where the markets are open, a number of them. The electronic, the gold was open, up $9. Silver market was up $0.05. Cents. And look at the beating you took in the crude. Now, part of this, in my opinion, has to do with President Trump signing that bill that was put before him from both the House and the Senate where, if you will, we're overseeing and backing the rights of the protesters in Hong Kong. China's going to be furious about it. With that, you have to figure which way does the market go? Does it make the trade phase one push it out even further? It well could. Obviously, the market didn't like what it saw. And that's very important. And that's one of the reasons gold was up, currency so-so. But it's Thanksgiving in America. And when we go to sleep in the markets, it affects everything. If you take a look at gold, it's on the monthly chart, you've got lower highs and lower lows. So in terms of the swing line trend, it's down. But the market is over these two numbers, the 100 month moving average and the 18 month. Therefore, the bias is up. They fight each other and you're sort of stuck here in no man's land. Momentum is measured in the market. It's turning down. When we take a look at a weekly area chart of just closes, You've gone from 15.26 to a low of 14.62.70 this week. So even with the rally, that's where you're at. When you come and you look at just a bar chart of what's going on, you get the picture here, you see that you've got lower highs and lower lows. Now, you might want to go take a hard look at my gold report. Remember, I put up a gold report, I think it was last Wednesday. It only stays up five business days. So if you go on to research, you'll see Iris Special Metal Report. I covered the monthly, the weekly charts, the quarterly charts. I do an awful lot in there. You're going to like what you see with uh, price counts and, of course, some of the other analysis such as seasonals in here. And if you look at the market, you've still got the swing line lower highs, lower lows. That gets negated if you take out 1479.20. In fact, that could give you, if you didn't take out this week's low of 1449.60, the possibility of higher lows and a higher high, taking out the downtrend. Where's the resistance? It's up above the market at 1492.20, the 18 week average. The support of the moving averages, they're very far away. So far away, I don't know if that what I'll call they're in play. I think what's in play is the lower Bollinger Band. That number is 1447.10. And my theory is the first time you hit the band, be it on the way up or down, is often a spot the market stalls for a bit. And we'll see if, if, if the market breaks down, if it does it, or is the market saying, I don't have the power to get down to that number, I'm going to neutralize the downtrend. If you were to close the week, now remember the week, over the 1492.20 area and not take out this week's low, you'd actually turn the trend back to the upside. If you take a look at the slow stochastic momentum, it's down. So we're in a downtrend as measured by the swing line. The bias is down since you're under the 18 week and you've got that pattern of lower highs, lower lows, and the downside potential is 1447.10. When I come over to the ETF GLD, I've got the same pattern, lower highs, lower lows, momentum down, bias down. If the market continues down, 136.03, the lower Bollinger Bands a support zone, take out 13900 without getting through these previous lows, you can negate the downtrend. To set the trend up on a weekly chart, you have to close over this 140.66 level right now. In the uh, ETF GDX, this is the big one, you've got lower highs, lower lows. You're in a downtrend, momentum is still pointing down, bias is down. What negates the market is last week's high. If you can get over 
2750. What that would do in this case is it could end up, the word is could, with the potential for higher lows, higher highs. The key is you'd have to get over 2782. If you're down again, 2574 could be in play. The gold-silver ratio is backed off from 93.86, and it's currently trading around 86.20. Just sort of hanging in here, not doing a lot. And in the silver chart, you're still very much in the bear camp with lower highs, lower lows. That could be negated by taking out last week's high. Suddenly, last week's high is important in a lot of the metals. So what if the market were to get over, and that number was 17.21, that could end up with the potential for higher lows, higher high. You'd have to close over the 1740 level to get bullish. If the market continues down, and it, right now the bears are in control, 1641.20 could be the downside target. In the copper market, this is not a clear chart. I could argue that you've got your bounce, but when I had this move right here, this is the time. You had an outside week down. Once you took that out, the swing line loses itself. And you're waiting for a new pattern that you haven't gotten. So I don't really have a pattern on the swing line. I have a market that I can argue resistance is the upper Bollinger Band, supports the 18-day average. A pattern would develop and it would be bearish. If this market would take out 261.30, then I could argue lower highs lower and low and close under 261.45 say and the trend would actually turn down looking for the potential maybe of the 252 and a half area. In the platinum market the trend is down. You have lower highs, lower lows. The first challenge of the 100 day average has repeatedly offered a little longer term support. That doesn't mean the 18 isn't in play, it always is. And it did its job nicely all through here. But now the market's under it. If this market continues down, that's the first support. Resistance, 902. And if you were to take out 929.70, the high there, you could flip the chart into a bullish pattern. The onus is on the bull to do that. The bears have control. A market that's just come back from the dead on the, month, on the weekly chart is this palladium. I'm laughing because powerhouse market, higher lows, higher highs. Now, one of the things I teach in my charting course is the idea to never be short over a key moving average, the 18 week, 18 day, unless you're trading on the daily chart, what we call lost embedded trade. It's the only exception. On this type of chart, you've just been friendly and you've been friendly basically since August when the market challenged the number, settled under it once and got over it, hasn't settled back under it. I really thought this area for a while there was going to be a top area as the market was coming down. It grabbed traction before taking out prior lows and what a surprise, back to the upside. Last, the dollar index still in an uptrend, higher lows, higher highs, momentum up, bias up. Unless you come back down to 97.55 and take that out, the bulls have control, support 97.98, and they're looking for resistance, I think, at the upper Bollinger Band, just against that 9,900 level. Now, one of the things you know I do is I put out a lot of research, and for the Cyber Week coming up, it starts actually with the posting of this video. If you buy my research one year of any of the products, the full research package, the commentary only, or my subscriber video, if you do that, I'm going to give you the charting course for free that I have, and that's $179.95. It's a heck of a value. It's going to be good for one week only. By the way, you don't have to take the charting course now. Once you get it, you can decide when it starts for you. We'll work with you on that, but I will honor one week. So if you're looking to spend, example, one year on my subscriber videos, $156 complete. Now you're also getting the charting course, which is worth more than that. So a good time to take a look. And you'll, you'll notice if you buy a year package on, our, uh, on my full research or my commentary only, we offer a special package price on those. Again, the charting course is thrown in. Go to our website under the word education and research. You can read all about this there. I won't be here on Monday. You'll see me on Tuesday. Have a great weekend.